Dr. Venkat. Uh, Professor Ramakumar, uh, thank you for accepting the invitation for a talk. Uh, on behalf of SRM University AP uh, students, staff and faculties, I would like to give you a warm welcome. And the topic looks very interesting, uh, artificial intelligence to aerospace applications. Uh, it will be our great pleasure to listen to this interesting topic. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Thanks, now sir. I would like I would like to ask uh, Dr. Lakshmi Sirisha to introduce our today's speaker. Thank you, sir. Uh, good evening, all. Good evening, sir. It's my pleasure to go through your bio, sir. Uh, so here is a brief bio. Uh, Dr. Ram Kumar got awarded with PhD from Indian Institute of Technology, Madras, in turbo machinery area. Uh, sir has received his master's degree from Ranchi University and bachelor's degree from Andhra University. Uh, he has 12 years of industrial experience and five years of research experience and five years of teaching experience. So prior to his um, um, an academic like uh, joining in uh, Dayananda Sagar University, he worked at Rolls-Royce uh, India Private Limited and Honeywell Technology Solutions Private Limited. GMR Institute of Technology and MWP uh, MIGMA Limited. He also worked as a visiting faculty to EVC and Manipal University. Uh, so has made his contributions in product design and development and analysis of various components for Boeing 777X and Airbus A350 and Honeywell HDF7000 engine programs. Um, he published research articles in national and international journals and conferences. Uh, he is a reviewer for so many prestigious journals and conferences. He also has one defensive publication and two patents to his credit. Um, sir, area of interest is, uh, it, it includes gas turbine propulsion, turbo machinery, turbine aerodynamics, and cooling technologies, augmented heat transfer, CFD, and systems engineering. Sir is currently working at uh, Dayananda Sagar University. He is heading the Department of Aerospace Engineering. Sir, it's our honor to have you today here. Please uh, continue with your uh, presentation, sir. Thank you, madam, for your kind uh, introduction. Thank it's you. my pleasure to have a discussion today. Good evening to all. Good evening to all. Good evening. Let's get started with the uh, our discussion. I understand that many of you from the mechanical engineering department, when now uh, Professor Venkat called me and asked me to give a lecture, uh, I really excited to have a discussion with you. But the only thing is, I told uh, something is already available with me. Uh, some presentation is, uh, I made this a presentation for a different purpose. So I told this presentation is ready, but can I use this one? Uh, he agreed for me. Thank, thanks a lot, uh, uh, Professor Venkat. Okay, uh, even though, you know, uh, as uh, Madam mentioned, I had an experience, wide experience in the aerospace uh, engineering. So I thought I can do justice for the, something related with the aerospace applications. So that's why I have chosen the topic for today. Uh, excuse me, and uh, if it is a, uh, uh, you know, whatever we are speaking, whatever we are discussing today, this entire thing is related to the mechanical engineering. Whenever I am saying this on the aircraft, just link that to the any machinery in the uh, mechanical system. Nothing more than that. But otherwise, it's more or less same. Okay, uh, wherever possible, I try to connect with the mechanical applications. Otherwise, today's topic is mainly on the aerospace applications. The topic for today is, uh, it is uh, given here, artificial intelligence in aerospace applications. You know, nowadays it's a buzzword, uh, artificial intelligence are simply called as AI, artificial intelligence. So now everyone is speaking about uh, this artificial intelligence. Let's also, we also let's have a discussion on the uh, kind of the 50 minutes time for the having the topic on the artificial intelligence. Uh, before starting, I just want to dedicate today's presentation to my professor, my PhD advisor, Professor B. Vikribles Prasad. He passed away day before yesterday. My sincere 
respect to him. Whatever I am today, it's all because of him. I just wanted to dedicate two days presentation to him. Uh, next, let me, anyhow, uh, Professor has introduced me. Who am I? Uh, my name is Rama Kumar. I'm working as a professor and a chairman. Chairman is nothing like, uh, uh, nothing but head of the department, head of the department. We call uh, head of the department as a chairman in the university here. So I'm working as a professor and a chairman in the department of aerospace engineering in Diamond Sagar University. Uh, this university is the state allowed private university. It's uh, located in Bangalore. This is the table of contents. Basically, uh, we tried to spend some time in uh, trying to understand the AI, what is AI, artificial intelligence. Then we will try to see some applications of artificial intelligence in civil and defense aviation. And uh, if time permits, we also look over the, some applications in these space technologies. And we will have a small discussion on challenges that's basically pain points and the way ahead in the artificial intelligence. Before having a discussion, I just want to convey some messages here, which is given by Eliezer. By far, the greatest danger of artificial intelligence is that people conclude too early that they understand it. Even I'm not exception that, it is too early to have the, um, you know, saying complete about the artificial intelligence. It's a developing, it's a developing area. It's a developing for a long time. It is not the very new technology. We will discuss that. And it is too early. That's what we, uh, we want to keep it in our mind. We are still developing. A lot of things are happening in the artificial intelligence. Okay, this slide slows uh, you know, it's not really, this speech is not really to convey the what is AI, but I just try to give it very, very briefly. I just want to mention what is artificial intelligence. As it is shown here, artificial intelligence is nothing but a technique which enables machines to mimic human behavior. Whatever the human we are working, we want to make the mission to mimic our humans. So any technique which is related to that come under the artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is very, very broad. It contains the machine learning. It also contains the deep learning. Deep learning majorly, uh, probably you could have heard something like uh, neural networks, artificial neural networks, analytical neural, a lot of neural networks. It's all linked with the mind. In the mind, you say neurons. Similar to that, we will have the network with the neural networks. There will be a lot of layers. Maybe uh, we train the different layers basically. So deep learning is the kind of the first part which uses a lot of combinations of the multi-layer neural network. And the little level is the machine learning. So deep learning is the part of the machine learning. Machine learning is nothing but the subset of the artificial technique which use the statistical methods. You all know that uh, different statistical methods like average value, mean value, mode value, then we will say about the distribution. Uh, there is something even we use the, it's all based on the different data, data sets and the available data. Okay. So at this moment, just keep in your mind, artificial intelligence is a very broad area, which consists of the machine learning and machine learning, again, it consists of the deep learning. In artificial in, in the, uh, intelligence, there are different techniques or different features of AI. I will try to cover whatever I'm showing here in the presentation now. Thing is, in this presentation, I just tried to keep all the pictures actually. You all know that the picture says it's a kind of the more, more than the words. <laughs> so I try to keep the more pictures. Okay. It's, e it's very, very easy to understand. Today's uh, lecture is a uh, very basic things. We just go through the different applications, right? 
we will try to understand something about the deep learning. We, uh, we don't really look over the theoretical background, but we try to see where, where all these things can be used. We try to use these things, deep learning, facial recognition. You all know that facial recognition. So by seeing the picture, people are, uh, you know, system or uh, mission is identifying you. That is nothing but the facial recognition. Automate task, data ingestion, cloud computing, quantum computing, chart box. These are the different features of artificial intelligence. So we will see something about the where we are using this, all these techniques. I will show some applications where we are using some places we are using the facial recognition, some places we are using the data ingestion, some places we are using the cloud computing and chart box. Probably you all know about the chart box. This is very, very widely used now. Wherever uh, many applications, whenever you go to the, some new uh, you know, website, there will be something like chart box will pop up. Probably you, you could have seen in many areas chart box. OK. What is the AI? Uh, again, as I mentioned, this is not the very new technology, but people used to have the different names earlier. You know, 1990s, there was something like expert system. In the expert system, we make the some algorithm, uh, the coding, maybe you can say it's a kind of the replacing our an expert, replacing a knowledge, knowledge of the expert, okay, instead of the human get the knowledge of the expert and include that knowledge in a kind of the computer code, a computer algorithm. It is majorly based on the rule base. There will, there will be some questions like if, then you, if you get something, okay, and or otherwise it will go to the next. So it's something like you are going to a doctor and the doctor is asking, trying to uh, diagnose the disease. Then probably he may ask a hundred questions. The same way we will ask the questions here. Um, what is your problem? When it started? What are the symptoms? Like that. So it's all connected with the questions. When you, based on the, your answer, next question will be taken. So ultimately, it will end up with some solution. That is called as the expert system. That's a kind of the first generation artificial intelligence. In the second generation artificial intelligence, we, are, we use a lot of statistics. That's basically search model, statistical models. So based on the earlier data, it doesn't really deal with the science. It deals with the data, right? So it doesn't understand why we reach to that situation. Only thing is we have the data. From the data, this is a trend. So we will follow the trend. That's kind of the things. That's kind of the second generation. Now we are in the third generation. In the third generation, we are trying to include this expertism and the you know, statistical methods to take the decisions. So we are trying to mimic the brain model. So this is the third generation intelligence. So if, uh, we coined the AI for this one, but earlier also it's there available, expert system. And some of you probably you could have seen the Japanese chess. Earlier also people used to play with the computer. And it's also kind of the artificial intelligence. Okay. And we try to use the artificial intelligence in different applications, different use cases, we'll say. And probably we will try to, uh, wherever, wherever is required, I will try to uh, highlight that it's used Artificial intelligence is used in different areas like customer experience, supply chain, human resources, fraud detection, knowledge creation, research and development, predictive analytics, real-time operations, customer services, risk management analytics, customer insight, pricing and promotion. And here, all these use cases are applicable for the mechanical systems also. It's the same thing. Now, uh, anyhow, uh, this lecture is majorly for the uh, aerospace. So I just tried to show you the different uh, players in the aviation. This is basically stakeholders, we say. In the aviation, they, 
Uh, same thing for the mechanical also, nothing different basically. Uh, there are different main players here. You can see something like MRO. MRO is nothing but the maintenance, repair, and overall. Okay, I just kept the some of the company names who are uh, who are the kind of the leaders in MRO. Even for the MRO, is the same thing for the cost or the you know aeroplanes. It's more or less same. The MRO. Uh, here we have the airliners. Then we have the leasing companies. Then we have the generalist. Generalist in the sense these are the uh, when it comes to the aerospace, these are the OEMs we say original equipment manufacturers. Airbus and Boeing, these are the major OEMs. Okay, uh, mainly for the commercial ones, these are the major ones. When it comes to the uh, you know defense, again there are many people. I just kept the, some of the people here. Sukhoi, Dassault Aviation, probably you all know Rafael. Rafael is from the Dassault Systems. Okay, Sukhoi, you probably you could have heard. The fighters, what we have earlier, fighters are from the Sukhoi. Along with that, maybe Bombardier, um, you know, they have the um, business jets. Okay, and some companies are majorly for the engines. Uh, Rolls-Royce, Honeywell, Saffron, uh, UTC, Tails, and there are many, many people who are there in the engines. I'm fortunate to work with a couple of these companies, Rolls Royce and uh, Honeywell. I, I worked with the Honeywell and the Rolls Royce. So, based on that information, I'm trying to share some info, uh, whatever the learnings I made. There is, again, along with that, there will be sub, uh, equipment suppliers. They don't really supply the complete engines, but they will supply some equipment. There are so many systems in the aircraft. It's the same way in the your mechanical systems. Then if you take the bus as one system, it has many subsystems. Similarly, in the aerospace, it's the same way. There are different subsystems. Okay, some people, they will supply only uh, some of the equipment. And some people will have the supporting system. So these are the different players, actually. Along with that, today's application, we, I included something from the airports, Airport Authority of India. It's a, a common for the airports. I just want to say it's the airports. Okay, uh, my presentation, what I did is I will try from the bottom to top. We will start with the MRO, how they are using, where they are using and all. Then slowly we will move up. MRO is the maintenance, repair and overall. You all know that any system, any vehicle, it needs the maintenance. Generally, we will have the uh, maintenance uh, maintenance checks. Aircraft also, there will be scheduled maintenance. Based on the component's life, there will be different uh, maintenance, scheduled maintenance. But along with that, sometimes what happens is uh, unexpected problems may arise, right? So. Once you have a problem, you are reacting for that. That is called as the reactive maintenance. The problem with the reactive maintenance is, suppose you, you have found some problem, then you started working on that problem. Thing is, it takes a lot of time. Probably you need to wait for a long time to get your uh, parts. Then, you know, anything, uh, suppose if you take the aircraft, if it is uh, downed, it is grounded for some time, you know, huge losses will be there for the aircraft. So what we need to do is, we want to reduce the time, time for the repair. So for that purpose, many people use the predictive maintenance, like it's like health monitoring. You all know probably even nowadays, even cars, we have the health monitor. Similar to the cars, we have the health monitoring system for the big aircraft, right? So what they do is they will keep monitoring the performance of the various components and the, from the performance, they will predict, oh, okay, my performance is degrading now. So this is a time probably for the changing this. So earlier days, what people used to do is they will, in the aircraft, they will get the lot of data, new numerous data. There will be a lot of sensors, a lot of data is collected. Earlier, what they used to do is after getting down or, or getting you know grounded after landing only they used to transfer that data to the system but nowadays now we have the wireless using the wireless technology 
Now what we do is onboard, onboard data, whatever the data you are collecting while flying, that entire data will be communicated to the ground server. So by the time it reaches to the landing, you will be ready for your, with your, all your, you know, equipment maintenance. So in this way, we try to reduce the time period between the, uh, you know, for maintenance. So this is a very, very important thing uh, which Yambar uses. The same thing you can apply for the vehicles, mechanical vehicles also, same thing you can apply. The second one is the, again, now people are coming up with the very, very small robots. You just see this is the, uh, still it's under the development. Uh, you see uh, here, it is a kind of a small robot and which goes inside and which takes the, it has a lot of sensors. It is developed by the road size. They're still under the uh, working. So what it does is some places you can't really see from the outside. Uh, something like boroscope people used to do earlier. But nowadays they are trying to do, uh, send a small thing inside and get the images. From the images, they can find what the problem is. So this is a kind of the new development is happening. And the other thing is, you know, earlier days uh, for the maintenance, uh, people used to have the manuals, technical manuals. When something goes wrong, they should uh, refer to the manuals. They should, you know, uh, they used to work, they used to learn there. But nowadays, what we are doing is we were, we are going towards the AR, VR techniques, artificial, uh, you know, um, reality, virtual reality, augmented reality. So by using those uh, techniques, now, you know, uh, instead of the 2D drawings, you will have the 3D models and you can walk through the models. It's very easy to understand. Okay, so that's the another area people are working. Next one is the supply chain optimization. Supply chain means, suppose you need a component. That component, uh, you know, if you, are, if you are starting your maintenance job once the landed, then it takes a long time to get the, many times you will not have the same component into your stock. Then you need to order, you need to get it back. It takes a hell lot of time. Till that time, if you are grounding your aeroplane, it's a huge loss. Okay, that's why we want to reduce the time. We want to have more productivity there. So in the supply chain optimization, you all know that I think uh, uh, some of you uh, probably you could have learned something about the operations management. So supply chain optimization means, okay, what is the optimum way to get my parts in a quick way and in a cheaper way? Okay, so people are using a lot of data for that purpose. This is something on the airliners. We are trying to go to the next step after the MR. I, I, again, this is, I'm not really showing the, all the applications. Only thing is, I'm just trying to cover some of the applications. Okay. Uh, airliners, they are using a lot of information nowadays. The moment you search something with the Google, you are, if you have plans to go somewhere, vacation plan, and the probably uh, the first step probably you could have, that is you will try with the Google. Since the moment you try, they will track you. <laughs> Airliners, they will try to track you. They will try to understand you where you are going. By that time, they start sending you the lot of information. Okay, uh, they, uh, these are the packages available. Uh, these are the good places to visit. And at the same time, they are, you know, probably you all know nowadays social listening. Social listening in a sense, like Facebook, Twitter, or WhatsApp, whatever you are uh, keeping the information. Many people use that to try to understand your likes, your behavior. So based on that, they will try to send you a lot of information. Okay, if they understand that you are the uh, person who likes the sports, then definitely what they do is immediately they will send you a lot of information saying that, okay, for sports, these are the you know, good places to visit. And these are the uh, places you can go there, visit there, all that information they will do. So that's the kind of the tourism. <laughs> now it's uh, airliners are also helping for the, uh, you know, helping you to finding out the locations and getting the hotel rooms, uh, all that they are doing. This one is for the um, ticketing. Probably you all know that um, you know, when you are traveling, when you are using the flight, 
probably flight time is very less, but you need to spend a lot of time in the airport and the airliners um, for getting the ticket and all. But nowadays we are uh, we are trying to use the kind of the online online ticketing. So you need not to really wait in the queues. So people are using that. They it 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 gives it takes uh, you know lot of information from you. And this one is a. Uh, uh, luggaging, that's also, you know, nowadays, um, airliners, they started um, uh, easy luggaging, actually. Earlier days, while ticketing itself, they used to ask you to keep your luggage, and they used to weigh that, and then um, they start uh, loading that. And that. Now, uh, they're coming with these systems which can uh, minimize your, uh, you know, pains, basically. And this is where face recognition. Now, earlier days, you know, there will be a person who checks your um, um, your entry, your ticket, all that. Now people are trying to use the face recognition. So once uh, this is like you you just scan your face, then it identifies whether the, you are the same person or different person. Many times you are seeing the at gates. Now nowadays they are trying with the face recognition to reduce your time basically. So yeah. The other one is the number uh, from your likings or uh, from your discussions in the Facebook or the, uh, you know, Twitter. They will try to understand uh, what you like. And, you know, by the time you get into the flight, they will supply you the, the one what you like the most. So they are trying to understand you more and uh, supply you the more what you want, similar to, uh, you know, snacks or so. Early days, they used to do a lot of things and they used to, a lot of food uh, used to be, you know, wasted, but nowadays they are tracking, tracking in the sense they will come to know how many passengers are coming. Based on that, you know, they will prepare the food. A uh, lot of food waste is, uh, has been reduced by using this information. Uh, this is for the uh, crew, uh, you know, uh, crew vacation. That's the uh, probably in the operations management. You could have done some problem on the, um, uh, you know, leave. Uh, so, uh, these are the crew. You all know that uh, uh, in the airport, what we do is, um, the uh, crew need to travel from one place to other place. They need to stay there, and again in the next flight, uh, they need to come back. So here, lot of optimization is required. Whom to send where, and how many days they can send there. So that's the easier way to uh, minimize their expenses, actually. Crew planning, crew planning, assigning the crew to the different destinations. So now people are using a lot of data for that. And again, it's uh, I have mentioned a um, lot of information about you is used to help you and guide you for the different uh, uh, you know vacation plan your vacation very effectively, where to stay, uh, what to see, and uh, how much you need to spend. All that information you can get it now. Right. The other application is managing the routes, flight routes. You know, uh, now a lot of data information is available for them before the flight departures. So basically, based on that, they will try to change their um, you know uh, flight uh, routes actually. So again, based on the information, suppose they come to know there is some event is happening somewhere. Then definitely they expect the you know big gathering there. Accordingly, they will increase the flights there. They reduce somewhere where there is no demand. All that is the more dynamic now. Earlier also people used to do that, but earlier people used to do manually and they used to wait for some time and they used to react. But now it's a kind of the more prediction by knowing this data by you can predict the information and you get the information from the passengers. Accordingly, you can get. You can use this uh, um, routing actually, and this is another one people are using variable pricing. Variable pricing, in a sense, uh, probably some of you could have experienced that. Uh, even though same flight, same destination you are going, but they will use the different uh, prices for the different uh, you know uh, seating arrangements. Suppose they come to know you are the lover of the window. <laughs> They will try to keep the windows as the higher price. Okay, variable price that's uh, happening now. Again, here they will use the lot of information from you. This again uh, something. Uh, this is the dynamic uh, 
you know uh, flight scheduling and uh, these are the something like chart bars um, you know once you go there uh, earlier many people used to be there now instead of a, a human being there is a robot and there will be a system uh, it's more interactive uh, it scans once you, uh, it scans your ticket it will guide you what gate it comes all that information it guides okay and some announcements we can use these um, uh, robots actually and the other application is autopilot it's not the new but it's becoming popular now and we are giving a lot of um, um, intelligence to the mission now probably you all know that uh, flights you know majorly when it is a take off and landing mainly pilot will be more active other than when it once it goes into the cruise generally mission will take care so they will go for the autopilot mode in the autopilot mode everything will be taken by the mission but still uh, pilot has the control it can change it can engage or disengage that option is available you all know that nowadays uh, uh, driverless cars auto driver auto driving cars that's also coming up similar to that but in the aeroplane it's already there for a long time autopilot option is there for a long time uh, this is something about the trainings uh, again uh, i have mentioned something like ar vr augmented reality virtual reality they are using for the getting trained and this is something for the uh, dynamic information routing so in you know uh, once you once you start origin and the destination flight plan will be developed okay that's the usual nothing new ever but now we have got in new systems where it is a kind of the real time information you will get it something like uh, weather okay in real time weather you will come to know okay you are here you are going in this path so by the time you go here probably weather will be like this they will try to predict the weather also right and the information from the local things they will try to upload so with all these things lot of uh, you know very great things are coming up uh, these are the some of the things which are, I, i have already covered here we will try to uh, till now we just try to understand some applications in the civil and we try to understand some of the things in the defense you know the first and foremost thing is the military intelligence it is very very critical area you can estimate the your enemy how do we do that let of many techniques uh, but because of the time i'm not really covering but uh, this is one area where a lot of uh, intelligence artificial intelligence is getting used the other one is the weapon management uh, this uh, probably you all know that down the line we will have the more uh, uavs unmanned air vehicles there will not be any pilots here okay they just uh, unmanned air vehicles drones and uavs we say they just go and attack probably you you could have heard the recent stories how drones got used for killing a person okay okay uh, here in the defense weapon management is the one of the areas where people are um, uh, using so which weapon where to use where to attack uh you know uh, once the, uh, they get the lot of information from the images from the image they can identify what kind of the uh, flight or what kind of the things are available based on that missions itself they can take the decisions right we will not have the much time uh, for getting the information to the ground and uh, sending these uh, decisions to the missions now we want these missions to take its own decisions that's another area people are coming but cyber security is very important especially when you are working with the military obviously entire thing is uh, you need to have a lot of security and here i'm trying to show something about the um, health um, uh, records basically you know nowadays what what's happening is suppose someone gets um, um, you know hurt then by using the data earlier data they try to find out okay what all uh, record about this person and they will try to see uh, whether he is in the um, uh, immediate attention is required or you can delay the uh, you know attention so suppose you have many soldiers and they want to prioritize which soldier needs immediate attention for that they use lot of personal information okay 
our information will be stored and based on that they will try to act that. and this you all know that a lot of images cameras nowadays um, so many you many new technologies have come even in the darkness you can get the images this is very important application again i'm saying this thing this is something on the uh, the queues in the airport it's a really horrible experience uh, the the biggest pain for the uh, civil you know uh, transport is a kind of the security check the nowadays many automated tools are coming and this way but wherever possible they they are trying to you know use the missions right for the security check and probably you all know here uh, again some of the things like from images they can identify okay whether someone is having something inside and uh, during covid time this is very important now uh, now they have developed these systems which can scan you and from the scan complete scan you can find out the temperatures various parts of the temperature you can it shows that so from the, this person is having you know high temperature something like that so this is a uh, nowadays widely used and you all know a lot of robots are getting developed even in india these are the indian developed robot robot section and this is again uh, sanitization you can see here and the cleaning purpose they are trying the trying to use the robots and this is a again um, sanitization uh, based on the image uh, again a different robo which identifies that and uh, sanitizes that uh, this is the another area where uh, airport uses the intelligence gate management again it's a very very uh, you know uh, people who have traveled they know the pain you know one gate to other gate you need to travel it's very very tough actually uh, sometimes you miss the flight also uh, especially for the busy airports one gate to other gate moving in between is really hard so uh, now nowadays what we are they are doing is uh, based on the passengers and they know the destinations and accordingly they will try uh, try to accommodate nearby and that's one thing other thing is they are sending the information to the passenger actually earlier days they need to go to the display and uh, by seeing the display they, they will come to know which gate they need to go if there is a, some sudden change in the gate then again they need to rush now we are trying to you know replace that with a lot of information okay uh, once you get into the airport you will come to know the information then you can rush it you need not to really spend much time in the gates and all so that's one thing and this is for the um, scheduling and this is for the um, robots are used to park your vehicles and these are widely used for the ticketing okay uh again other pain point is the um, luggage uh you earlier this you need to wait uh, you don't know uh, which uh, which point with uh, your luggage will come but and i think nowadays you will get the information ahead then you need not to really worry much so this is the luggage management and this is again uh, take off and landing scheduling uh, you can do better planning now optimization lot of optimization techniques can be used for the uh, planning your take offs and landings a um, lot of interactive things now it's happening and all and sometimes uh, you know if there is a mist now you uh, pilot cannot really physically he can't see anything but now the uh, thing is they will get the lot of information from the ground they will get a lot of images from that they can take the decision okay it's the more augmenting your um, uh, landing and take off time and this is for the security um, images okay this is for the gate management again uh, they scan your vehicle based on that uh, they will allow all that is allowed now the other thing people use is the applications in the airport management is the shopping again in the shopping uh, 
they are hearing you they are watching you uh, you all know that nothing is private now when you are using the internet wherever you are using then everything is tracked so from the uh, from that records they will identify your behavior your likes unlikes and they will come to know uh, your shopping interest so based on shopping interest you will get the notifications okay instead of sending the bulk information uh, if no if they know about you then they will try to send the information which is related to that so that's the kind of the uh, you know uses they are doing and we will move to the next step this is for the component in the system suppliers uh, maybe people uh, will uh, started uh, even though it's uh, not the very new but uh, people started uh, putting lot of investments from 2019 onwards 2018 some work was done but it has got the more momentum from the last two years two three years 2019 onwards they just started uh, understanding the ai applications implementing in the you know their products their value additions so there are different phases and uh, you know uh, uh, phase 3 is something like pushing barriers initially we used the machines to assist human assistance then we want to collaborate human collaboration then we want to go for the autonomous autonomous means there is no human now it's entirely machine here right so initially we start with assistance then collaborative then autonomous here there is no human being okay so there are uh, predictions saying that single pilot uh, cat operations will start from 2030 you all know generally for the civil aircrafts we have the two pilots pilot and co pilot but 2030 onwards probably we may have the single pilot along with that uh, your autopilot these are the two pilots basically and the 2035 onwards people are looking for completely I think uh, so your voice is breaking yeah connection what uh, so that's the prediction okay okay now we will try to understand something in the oems how the uh, people in the big industries are using the ai at the millions of hours are you able to hear is better now or still hear it yeah audio is better is it better now yeah, yeah it is better i still you have difficulty yeah yeah we can hear you or maybe uh, you can turn off your video as you suggested Yeah, yeah. The video, otherwise. Yeah, yeah. You switch off the video. So, yeah. I switch it off now. Yeah, audio is very clear now. Okay, good. Okay, so this is with the OEMs. You all know that the the big OEMs in the aircraft are the Boeing and the um, Airbus. Okay. Uh, what I'm trying to say here is, no company nowadays they can't really produce all the components. It's all kind of the you know it, something is developed somewhere and it will be get transported and they all get assembled in one place basically so airbus or boeing they do only assembling job but they will get the all the components from the different suppliers so just for your uh, your information one aeroplane will have some th something like 3 to 4 million components okay so just imagine that many components and uh, they will have so many suppliers. You just see here, for, uh, for your just information, 
uh, nowadays they work with the different countries something like us canada australia asia and europe so they get many many parts from the different uh, places different companies the managing this database is very very tough so they try to use the new algorithms what they do is they by using that they will find out the what is the um, uh, optimum way when to order what to order way from we order all that we, we can make some optimization techniques okay so that's the huge thing for the oems and uh, sometimes they spend a uh, lot of time and a lot of money to reduce the cost all that will happen through this one this is again the 787 i just tried to show they tried with the different countries not the one country uh, different parts from the different places they will manufacture and they will supply here so huge uh, uh, supply chain managing this uh, supply chain and at the same time optimizing these uh, operations is very important thing for the oems okay i will take 5 10 minutes more is it okay venkat ah uh, yeah okay yeah uh, this is something for the uavs this is my favorite uh, you know unmanned vehicle uh, unmanned air vehicles now um now uh, earlier people used to have the very big uavs now the new concept is swam swam of the uavs swam means group group of the uavs instead of the one big uav they will send thousands of the small uavs communication among the uavs acts really a very big task and we want to make the uavs more clever more intelligent so it's kind of completely autonomous completely autonomous in the sense it needs to take care about itself no communication from the ground it needs to take it needs to you know see the things and take the decision so that's how it's happening in the uavs yeah uh, something like connection loss return to home these are the new techniques people are using people are using in the sense suppose if the uav identifies itself okay something went wrong then it stops its operation and it needs to come back that's called as a return to home so it should it should be self uh, uh, you know intelligent okay there are this is a something like uh, um up, uh, maybe autonomous Uh, while in, while in the way if it find some obstacle then you should be clever enough to take the deviate from that okay and again going back what is the optimum route all that they can do and this is the another uh, uh, concept people are using uh, self healing and um, uh, you know when it is required they can separate and when their operations are completed again they can merge so this is a kind of the adaptive type adaptive type people are working on that uh this is for the weapons again uh, how how to use what to use weapon management that's very important thing people are using and this is for the you know saving the people again uh, no person will be available to see you uh, and uh, uh, take the action now we are trying to make our autonomous vehicles which can identify the people who needs the uh, help immediately it needs to react it needs to react okay something more on the oems what the people are using uh, this is a digital twin a uh, digital twin is nothing but the modeling modeling and simulations twin means uh, you know uh, twins <laughs> it's a replicate replica of the actual one suppose this is the actual one and this is the model for that uh, as mechanical people you all know about the modeling now it is so many modeling softwares are available and you can mimic the system with the model right digital pin and whatever you want to try you can try on your model a lot of simulations people are using you all are aware that a lot of cfd simulations structural simulations so all these come under the digital pin digital pin right this is something for uh this is for the data receiving and this is for the rental one uh, you know nowadays people are trying to understand um, uh, uh, like your uh, two wheelers you can rent the same way 
uh, people are uh, giving rental for the aircraft. This is a new way of working. So they want to know where all you are going. So they will try to connect with you and they will come to know where all you are going. And based on your location, they will charge the locations where you are checking. You know, some places are very harsh. So if your airplane is uh, traveling in that direction, they will charge you more. So they will try to get a lot of information that, uh, from a lot of data from the uh, uh, you know your vehicle, and accordingly they will charge. Okay, this is something about the space, and this is more kind of the fantasy. Fantasy, I can say. Uh, there are many applications people are working on that. Uh, probably you could have heard something about the satellite communication that's there. But now people are working with the link satellites. Uh, probably, you know, uh, SpaceX, they are working on the link satellites. Uh, once they start their operations, you see the satellites, traffic of the satellites in the air will be more than traffic on the uh, land. That's the way they are looking for. Their day, uh, requirement is something like thousands of satellites they want to send. 13,000, 15,000 satellites. So it's a huge uh, thing. It's happening on the communication part. You all know that now presently internet is the um, you know, connected one, cable one. They want to replace that entire thing with the you know, space related communication, uh, that satellite communication base. There are many things like uh, robonauts. Uh, you all aware that the astronaut, now we are coming up with the robonaut. So robo will take it. Robo, it takes, um, it takes that uh, space. It takes the decision as well. And this one, you all know, we already experienced this autonomous landing. Uh, we tried for the moon landing. You all know that autonomous landing. Rover, it needs to you know, land on the moon. So it can't really send the information and it wait for the, your uh, decision there. It needs to take its own decision, autonomous uh, landing. And the, down the line, people are looking for the design and construction of the artifacts. Uh, instead of taking from the ground, you, you make your own there, you landed in the planet, you make your own things there. So that is the design and construction of the artifacts. This is the another one. In situ resource utilization, instead of using the entire utility, uh, resources, taking the utilities from the ground, you try to use the uh, resources available in that planet and use it. So as I mentioned, uh, at this moment, we look, these are the kind of more fantasy, but it's not. Probably in the few decades time, we will see all these things. Okay, uh, maybe I'll just show one, some pictures more here. This is a kind of the rover, and this is a kind of the robonaut. Okay, and you all know that uh, now uh, uh, Mars and all, we are trying to get the images, those things, and they try to get the samples. They try to understand that. And this is kind of something like a 3D printing. In uh, whatever is required there, you print yourself. Machine will print the uh, whatever the component is required. It will print there. That's the uh, that's the uh, you know intelligence we are trying to do to the mission. And this is again a robot And this is what I'm trying to say. That's the link satellites. So a lot of uh, exciting things people are working on that with. Uh, artificial intelligence or machine learning is used. So ultimately it should, at the end of the day, they want to have the good business. Everyone wants to have the uh, uh, good business. So everyone wants to satisfy the customers, customize the services, and it helps you reduce the money, saves a lot of time and health point of view. We have discussed some of the things and ultimately everyone is looking for the wow, wow factor. So if we can do those things and we will get a lot of business. So ultimate thing is less pain, more gain. This is the motto, uh, whatever business people are working on that. Okay, uh, wait, uh, two minutes more. Uh, this is about the challenges. Uh, even though we see a lot of applications, but there are the challenges. You all know that. Uh, these are the, some of the many challenges. I just kept the, some of the challenges here. Building trust. 
is more important you know many people still they don't trust the artificial intelligence right okay uh, so making the people to trust on the artificial intelligence gaining the confidence about the uh, uh, customers that's the big challenge making the interface human interface ai human interface there should be some interface between the you and the mission how good you can make that interface that's the very important thing and the software malfunctions whatever you do some times you have the malfunctions so how to avoid that malfunctions probably you could have heard about the um uh, uh, pilot less um, car auto auto drive uh, it hit a person he got died so it's a malfunction you need to avoid so if there is a small incident happening again it takes a lot of time to get the confidence again so you need to be very very careful about the malfunction of the software uh, productivity you expect a lot of things it will gain it you will get a lot of benefits out of that but it takes a lot of investment and it may it takes some more time to get your investments back so immediate productivity you can't really get it so these are the some of the general challenges and again uh, we have a lot of expectation from the ai okay so these are the some of the challenges uh, i just want to mention here and again uh, okay machines are becoming okay talented or um, you know intelligent we need to train our human beings also okay. to use them so these are the a lot of things and um, uh, again you will have the a lot of mal practices so these are the some of the things you need immediate attention availability of the data understanding the data having self awareness this is a, we need to train people you all are hearing about millions of people are required for the uh, you know getting these systems and then using them okay so ultimately we want to use machines and we want initially as you mentioned we want assistance later collaboration and probably down the line we will try to use them okay okay i think that's it uh, maybe if you have some questions maybe we can spend 5 10 minutes i will try to switch on my video let me see whether it works yes uh, thank you very much sir uh, okay. dear students and uh, you know, participants in the call so you can question thanks for uh, patient listening yeah uh, if you have any questions maybe we can spend few minutes going through that yeah. uh, i know the, uh, this cannot be complete uh, you can't really completely understand these things but i uh, the main purpose of this is to give you kind of the glance of the different applications maybe you can think the similar kind of the applications in uh, mechanical systems also it's more or less same thing but so please uh, Yeah, yeah. Please raise your hand, or you can put in the chat box. Okay. We'll unmute you. Any questions? Uh, some Tusha. Tusha. Yeah, yeah. Tushar has a question. Right. See, Tushar, I think you can unmute yourself. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, good evening, sir. My name is Tushar. So, uh, and yes. Yeah. Uh, as you have said uh, in for ai to train ai we need lots of data so which is right. basically big data right, right. so uh, as we have seen with facebook and other companies there are a lot of privacy issues for data right right so i mean what are how do how does those issues extend in this uh, air airplane or aircraft industry so in the industry your privacy you know you need to take care even though systems are uh, getting improved or uh, uh, we are introducing the lot of laws but still when you are giving your information you need to be careful unless you are careful it's difficult so ethical issues will be there yes it's a big uh, you know topic ethics uh, business ethics okay uh, that itself is a big topic too. so before using anything believe it <laughs> you need to read terms and conditions <laughs> are you sharing your information are are, are you are losing your privacy 
not only for aerospace anything anything anywhere uh, now we are becoming more social so we like to share our uh, you know likes share uh, we want to share our experiences so when you are sharing yes that's a trouble will be there but again uh, we are coming up with a lot of policies you know initially uh, we don't have the very stringent policies where to use how to use and all now yeah a lot of policies are coming from the government also but uh, is it have i uh, answered your thing uh, tushar yes sir thank you sir thank you any more questions uh, please raise your hand or you can just uh, unmute yourself and ask a question or you can even send it in a chat box sir uh, i would like to ask you a question yes yeah, please yes please Uh, sir, uh, during this COVID situation, do you think the aerospace, like aero, aer aeronautical in industry, is suffering loss, or do you think it yeah. is like yeah. there is some <laughs> problem, right? So, do you it's think it is better loss. for as, us? Mm. Yes, sir. Uh, as you mentioned, actually, uh, mm. it's a huge loss. Obviously, as uh, that's yes, the worst industry. Hello, sir. Yeah, we lost you, sir. Uh -huh. Sir Ram Kumar, we are not able to hear you. Okay, maybe he can't hear us also. <laughs> yes, sir. And the other question that I would like to ask is Nuri sir. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sir got disconnected, I guess. No, no, we turned off his video, so we didn't hear it. Hello. Are you able to Hello. hear me? Uh, yes, sir. Now we are able to hear you, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Yeah, please go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, regarding the other question, that was like uh, the field of aerospace engineering, sir, for mechanical engineers. Like, uh, what does the present like? Uh, how uh, how do you think it it will change in the future, sir? Because as you are involving more and more aspect, like the presently the whole world is taking a turn towards AI and uh, all the automated automated uh, like automatization of this whole industries and everything. so how do you think mechanical engineers are going to play like uh, the role of uh, mechanical engineers are going to play the role in aerospace uh just for your information i am also mechanical uh, yes know, sir yes sir yes many sir. of uh, many of <laughs> many of us are the mechanical so it doesn't mean you need the you know aerospace degree anyone mm. who is having the uh, you know skills and the knowledge especially so uh, you know only thing is in aerospace you will get more advanced ones okay? okay so once you are good in your basics and the tool knowledge you can sustain anywhere you can you can join in industry aero industry so i don't okay, think sir. any uh, you know barriers for the mechanical engineers to come into the aerospace yeah. it's there. okay sir yes sir the, that's all sir thank you sir sir, sir this is razak uh, yes please Sir, I have been following some of these airline companies from the past few years, but the, I see that there are too much loss for these companies from many past many years, and not like this year. Like uh, you know, that it's Kingfisher and all Air India. These all are having huge losses, like twenty thirty crores and all. Why is that happening? <laughs> okay, uh, it's definitely good to say. Uh, you know, basically, uh, people work with the predictions. and it's a, again it's a, a, you need to have a kind of the balance to promote the travel a travel the uh, it's a lot of competition is happening in the business cut throat uh, uh, competitions are happening in the business so to get initial um, you know gains uh, they always look for reducing the price and uh, there might be 
uh, many other reasons. I'm just saying the competition based on the competition. They try to come up with the different business models. When you are trying with the different business models, we don't know there is always a risk. So because of those risks, actually, yeah, uh, there is a loss. So does automation affect employment and uh, the department? I mean, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a big debate, uh, Razak. It's a, definitely it's a big debate. But uh, just to share, you know, 20 years back uh, when we completed, uh, 20, 25 years back, when we just completed our BTEC, uh, that time IBM was in the boom. And everyone, everyone during that time uh, thought that only computer will survive people with the background of computers will serve and they will get the uh, good salaries, uh, good standard of living, all those things. But still, trust me, by experience, I don't really see the very big difference between the uh, professionals in the computers and the um, other people, core people, uh, people who are working in the core people. Initially, you may have the little difference, but once you gain some experience, it's more or less um, kind of the, you will get the more or less same salary as the others. Okay, and automation, what I'm trying to say is initially when we, uh, you know, 30 years back or 25 years back, when software boom came, then people thought, okay, computers will take and no human will have the work. But it's not, it's not that way. Anyhow, you are creating the system. And only thing is the way, how we are working, that will change. Work will be there, but you are creating the intelligence. So obviously your intelligence is more than the machine intelligence. Always, but only thing is you will get, you need to get new skills. Once you get the new skills and you will get, get equipment and you will spend some other ways actually developing still, you know, some other systems. Uh, people are expecting there are many news. It will increase the um, employability. It's not in the other way. It will not reduce complete. It's a debatable. Anyhow, we can have this separate discussion. <laughs> it's a really a very important question. Any more questions, students? Or yeah. okay, then I will just uh, quickly run through the vote of thanks. So. Thank you all for your gracious presence today and you know attending the second guest lecture uh, organized by our mechanical engineering department at SRM University. My heartfelt thanks to our distinguished uh, speaker, Professor BVN Ramakumar, Chairman, Department of Aerospace Engineering, Dayanan Sagar University, for his informating, informative and insp inspiring talk. In his talk, he gave simple uh, definitions of AI, ML, and you know, deep learning, and also showed the different applications, the vast applications, and you know, opportunities in aerospace, but it can also be related to mechanical, you know, right? And also the space engineering. So for example, the predictive maintenance uh, by you know, MROs, the airliners, you are trying to use AI and you know, all these things for tapping out the passenger preferences, you know, managing the luggages, the crew planning, right? And uh, gate management and air, aircraft component uh, people like manufacturers like Boeing and, you know, uh, Airbus are, you know, outsourcing uh, so many components. I mean, 4 million components as uh, in the talk we understood are coming from various, various parts of the world and, you know, inventory management and how do we, uh, you know, manage logistics and you know, all these things, uh, so much of logic and uh, AI is going into it. And you have seen even in space technology, there are so many things that uh, people are working on. So thank you very much, sir, for uh, sharing uh, so much valuable information and also showing us, uh, the students here, the various opportunities out there, right? Having the core uh, knowledge, and then we add this uh, se uh, separate skills, uh, it will be a deadly combination and will be very sought after because the domain expertise is very important uh, and on which if you add this uh, AMA, AI or you know such layers, you become very much valuable. And uh, 
I am very thankful to our management, that is our president, the vice chancellor, the pro vice chancellor, for their constant support and encouragement for hosting and organizing such activities. I sincerely thank the faculty and students of the mechanical department uh, for you know organizing this event. And I would also like to thank the IT uh, and knowledge management team for the technical support for the smooth running of this webinar and launching this event on uh, various social media. So last but not, but not the least, I thank all the faculty, scholars, students, and staff for attending this webinar. I'm sure that all of us have greatly benefited and had a great Thursday evening. Once again, thanks everyone for making it. Have a wonderful day. Take care, stay safe. So with this, uh, we end uh, our uh, webinar session. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for uh, patient listening. A special thanks to all the students and faculty. Thanks a lot for giving me the opportunity. Hopefully Thank we'll you, meet sometime down the line. Wishing you all the best. Thank you, sir. Bye. Thanks a lot.